So here we are again, once again, in August, and it's August 2022, and we're in Tame, Oxfordshire, the home of and resting place of Robin Gibb. And we are here today to visit once again the lovely St Mary's Church, which you can see just here, and to pay a visit to his grave. Did you know that for nearly half a century he was one of the truly unique voices and people in the history of pop music? He was a special spirit whose life and art reminded us of that time and place do matter. And you certainly get that feeling walking through here. As we speak, the time and place do matter. And as we all know, Robin, Robin was one of the popular chaps from the Bee Gees, a band that originally came from the Isle of Man. As we approach, we're looking at the church of which in the graveyard we will find Robin Gibbs beautiful grave And right dead set in front of us is the grave of Robin Gibb. Robin Hugh Gibb, CBE, singer, songwriter, 1949-2012. But as part of, of one of the three brothers who founded the Bee Gees over 50 years ago, Robin, the, Robin's voice, even at an early age, it seemed to come from a special soul. One who touched us instantly. Oh, you there? Hello there. <laughs> He's the man there. <laughs> it seemed to come from a special, I've said that, um, from the moment the world first heard his voice singing in unison with his oldest brother, Barry, on the Bee Gees' first 
worldwide hit, which was 1967's New York mining disaster. We knew we were being introduced to something completely new and special. And quickly, with solo turns on on such 60s era Bee Gees classics as I Can't See Nobody and I've Got To Get A Message To You, Holiday and Massachusetts, Robin Gibb became one of the most original pop voices of the 20th century. For those who came of age musically in the 60s, that worldwide explosion of Bee Gees music was a landmark moment. And the harmony drenched Bee Gees records of that era were Im immediately powerful. Even today those vocals can bring goosebumps and will touch the stunniest of hearts. This man, Robin Gibb, he didn't just live for the music that he and his brothers cremated. He was very much a family man and he lived for the quiet, peaceful life and hence why he chose Tame in Oxfordshire, England to become his home. And just as we turn, just ever so slightly, we can see his home, which is just over there, the lodge, etc., where a plaque was unveiled in his memory by his wife and son, Robin Jr. And Robin himself, and with the Bee Gees, has been immortalised in both the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Songwriters Hall of Fame. The church is signifying that it is midday, it is nearly lunchtime. Such a beautiful church, absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, with Robin, Morris, Barry, and Andy, they were all born in the Isle of Man to Hugh and Barbara Gibb, who were both musical uh, and they moved to England circa 1952. So they spent the best part of but the formative years, especially as toddlers growing up in the Isle of Man. And Robin started a little bit of a solo career. Well, they all did in their own, in their own way. But Robin started a bit of a solo career in the 70s.
And those who knew Robin remember his immense determination, personal strength, courage and the spirit of sweetness and love, which is depicted here at his grave. And Robin himself has four children. And one of his children, Robin Jr., lives and resides in his dad's home with Robin's wife. And as we look, we will see and literally not less than maybe 10 metres behind Robin's grave, there is a memorial to his younger brother, Andy Gibb, 5th of March 1958 to 10th of March 1988. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Now, Andy Gibb isn't actually here in this plot. He's laid to rest in America. I think it's Forest Lawn Cemetery is in. And here we are at the main entrance to St Mary the Virgin Church. I do not know if we're going to be able to get into the church today. But as it is, we are lucky. We can enter the church. And this, this church, on the day, on the day of Robin's funeral, was absolutely packed. And here lies a, 
equipped. Dedicated to John Williams, 1500 to 1558. Let's see if we can read what it says. John Williams, 1500 to 1559, knighted as Sir John in 1537, bought Wycote in 1539, was created Baron Williams of Tame in 1553 by the Queen Mary. As Sheriff of Oxfordshire, he conducted Latimer and Ridley and later Cranmer to await trial at Oxford. He was also present when they were burned at the stake. He was in charge of Princess Elizabeth when she was prisoner at Woodstock. She often visited his home at Rycote during this time. Queen Elizabeth appointed him to the office of Lord President of the Council of the Marches of Wales in 1559. One of the conditions of the appointment was that he lived at Ludlow Castle, where he died on the 14th of October, 1559. His funeral took place at Tame Church on the 15th of November, 1559. What an amazing tomb. Just look at that window. That is beautiful. And we shall now exit from the church as we arrived. A beautiful medieval church. This is.